Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I was praying to the Lord about what to share with you this morning. Uh, well, first, I wanted to get into my Bible. Uh, let, let me start with the date and all that. This is Thursday, July 2nd, and it's 9-11. 9-11 a.m., how about that? And my phone, the three dings, it's doing it every day. This morning was 8 o'clock on the dot. <laughs> I tell you what, I don't know what to think of that. Because there is no sound on my phone that sounds like three wedding bells. It just keeps me hopeful. And I rebuked the devil, pleaded the blood. I mean, said, Lord, if that's not of you, uh, make it stop. And I, it hasn't stopped. So, you know, it's kind of like that little butterfly. Some of you may remember a few years ago, I had this butterfly that was uh, came from the Dollar Tree, and it lasted a month or so, and then it died. Well, I had kept it. thought, maybe one day I'll replace the battery. And uh, if I remember right, I I put it, I just put it up on my baker's rack with the greenery and stuff, you know, to decorate it with a butterfly. And maybe, I, did I turn it on? I don't think I even turned it on. And it came on and it was like, oh, this butterfly is working. And it was like, shock, you know. And that thing, and it blinked. It blinked. It had a... a blinking feature and it would go be red green blue yellow you know red green blue yellow, something like that so i said oh how cool and i shared it on a video and i took my cell phone over to it and showed people you know look look this butterfly that just came on all by itself and i thought the battery was dead and that thing kept blinking and blinking and blinking for like three months or so before it quit. And I thought, if nothing else, you know, it was a gift from the Lord to make that little butterfly work again all by itself. And it was not even turned on. Okay, so let's uh, move on to this. All right, so I opened my Bible and I'm at Second Kings. And I... It just easily opened to that. And I read the history of the second kings about Elisha taking over for Elijah and how he had to work with wicked kings and only two were good, Hezekiah and... Um, anyway, I don't remember. Um, and I was going to read you this. This short little history on Second Kings and what happened, but then I I just I I wasn't feeling it. I thought, do am I supposed to read that or because that's what it opened to, the init, the prelude, whatever, not to the actual first page of Second Kings. So I got into my computer and I hit Quick Nav, which has all the books listed, and I just looked at them. I felt led to go to Psalms. I said, okay, Lord, and of course it has 150. <laughs> which ones? So here's what came to my mind. When I was going to an Assemblies of God church, and I've heard this recently here on YouTube, some scholars of the Bible decided that the Psalms were had prophetic words in them in each, like Psalm uh, 1 was for 1901 and Psalm 100 was for the year 2000 so Psalm 120 would be for 2020. And I thought, we all know Psalm 119 is like super long and it's got the whole Hebrew alphabet. So I'm not going to read that one to you. But I just thought 
I would share with you Psalm 120 and 121. And you tell me what you think. Are these prophetic for the year 2020 and 2021? See what you think. All right. I pray, O Holy Spirit, that you speak. Let me speak the words as they are written and add only what you want me to add. Use me as your vessel, a servant of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, let's get started. This one's not very long. It's titled in the NASB, Prayer for Deliverance from the Treacherous. A prayer for deliverance from the treacherous. A song of ascents. And the footnote says um, ex Exodus 34.24 and 1 Kings 12.27. But it doesn't. So those are references that you could look up. In my trouble I cried to the Lord. And he answered me. Who hasn't had some trouble already this year? Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips. From a deceitful tongue. That sure enough is true. All our politicians and mainstream medias are lying to us. You can think what you want, but we're being lied to. What shall be given? This is verse 3. What shall be given to you? And what more shall be done to you, you deceitful tongue? I'll tell you what, if they don't repent, they're going to go to hell. Sharp arrows of the warrior with the burning coals of the broom tree. Maybe that's the answer to that question. Sharp arrows of the warrior with burning coals of the broom tree. Woe is me, for I sojourn to Meshach, for I dwell among the tents of Kedar. Too long has my soul had its dwelling with those who hate peace. Well, isn't that the truth? I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Okay, so it's just talking about war. Hopefully, that, what would you call it? Idea that those scholars came up with that might, somebody's a God preacher believed, was right and taught us the Psalms based on that, showed us the lines in Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 and how they had to do with that year. Okay, now I'm going to read the next one. Psalm 121. The Lord, the Keeper of Israel. Verse 1. A song of ascents. See, they're going up. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. I was kind of surprised that was in there. The moon's never hurt anybody. You know, like sunburn. But anyway. Um, I mean, the Psalms are kind of a, like songs. They're like a 
poetry and this book this book tells who wrote each one my my NASB let's see who wrote this Psalms let's see it was up to 105 120 was written by anonymous 121 my title is help and a song of the sense and su some suggest hezekiah wrote this how about that okay he will not allow your foot to slip he who keeps you will not slumber behold he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day and the moon, nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out. And you're coming in from this time forth and forever. Okay. None of them actually refer to a rescue or an escape. That last verse talks about from this time forth and forever. He will guard our going out and our coming in. So i just like to know what you think. I mean, it's clearly talking about the Lord protecting us. And that could be for those who were left behind. Aren't we all hopeful that the rapture is this year? But if we have to see more and it goes into next year, heaven forbid, but it could I don't see it happening, but after hearing that word from Watchwoman and the dream, although even though it didn't mention the rapture, it could be for all the rest of the church that are left behind. It, see, that's just it. We get messages in part and parcel. Or if, is that the way to say it? In part. Nobody gets the whole story. The story's too long <laughs> for Jesus to give any one person the whole message. Okay? So he could be just warning everybody in general for all those who haven't gotten their self ready or they think they're ready but they're not. So the warning goes out to them, basically. If you know you're part of the bride, perhaps we do go. I pray we do. I hope we do. I can't pray it, but I can hope it. So at least this should give you hope that no matter what we might have to go through until we're out of here, the Lord is going to protect us and keep us and we don't, we cannot doubt it, people. We have to know, like I was talking about going through that tornado. I mean, he protected us. There's no doubt in my mind. Winds that high should have picked that tent up. Look how tornadoes will blow, just blow over trees that are rooted and all, all we had holding us down were tent, tent pegs. If anybody's gone camping, they're about this, they're about not even a half inch around and about this long. And you nail them at an angle. If you do it right, you don't want to put them straight in. You want to put them at an angle towards your tent to make it hold better through wind. But even at that, that's not much of a thing to hold it in, you know. 
I just know that was a miracle. The Lord protected us. And how much more so with all of us praying for each other and for all the saints, as it says in Ephesians chapter 6. And pray always with all manners of prayers and petitions in the Spirit and for all the saints. So I, I encourage you once again, if you cannot pray in the Spirit, don't feel bad about it. Just keep asking. If you really, really want it, the Lord will know your heart if you keep asking. Because I keep asking, I really, really want a dream or a vision or another message. And I want it sincerely and I'm praying for it. I think I'm just having to press in. I'm praying in the Spirit more. Hoping that He'll give me something for you. Or even if it's just for me. Just a little encouragement. Then, you know, but I haven't, yeah, I haven't gotten it. I have never had a vision. I've had a few dreams, but they were just, well, I have shared a couple on here. One was a dream about division, how the church starts off as a whole, and then there's a path that one goes one way, one goes the other, and part of half, about half go one way, and about half go the other. And then there was, another fork in the road and again we divided until we were down to like three or four of us going one way and he was showing me how people are gonna start off right and then they're gonna choose the wrong path and you over say this last hundred years this is what's happened you had that major revival in the 1800s which is when people started getting dreams and visions about the rapture and that's when people try to claim oh that's what some girl had a dream about the rapture and she started the whole thing and there really is no rapture it was just some girl's dream well because the holy spirit was invited to this revival i'm sure of it and since that time, there was probably a huge number of people getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And Satan had to be like, oh, no, they don't. And started finagling his way into churches and schools and seminaries. If not already in the seminaries. Teaching people wrong. Teaching them false doctrines. You know, through people, using people, the Jesuits were the ones. Who knows what they're taught in those Jesuit universities like Georgetown? Why don't you look up how many presidents went to schools like that? Yale, Harvard, Georgetown, I don't know. And then there's a Jesuit seminary, Jesuit college. I don't know the names of all of them. Well, anyway, I'm going to end it here. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. And I pray that we all be found worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. And that's Luke 21, 36, in case you don't already know it. I live by that. Escape all. See, what we just had, this pandemic, you might think, okay, I escaped that, and I'm still here. It wasn't really what they said it was. They made it into what it was. They had planned it in a, what they call that, something 201, last year. Or maybe it was 2017. Tony Fauci made the statement that in this administration there will be a pandemic. Now, how did he know that? It was planned. It was a planned pandemic. So we didn't really escape it. 
There were probably some people who caught this coronavirus because cold colds and flus are contagious, but more people die annually of the flu than of the big C, as I've heard it called. Okay, now I finish pleading the blood of Jesus over this video, myself, my internet, and my computer. I plead the blood of Jesus over my computer so the powers that be cannot hack into it and damage it. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you and all of your devices. And, um... your internet connections. With that, I'll say bye for now. Oh, and remember to say this with your prayers, your spiritual weapon prayers. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. I believe that's right. Look it up and see if I'm right. Okay, bye for now. I'll talk to you later.